Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Airspace, and a few of you have asked me to do different types of videos here on the channel, such as builds. And uh, I figure there's no time like the present. I just received my Flightline Hawker Sea Fury. I've also got my Eurofighter over here. Uh, now, of course, this video is just for the Hawker Sea Fury, just to test the waters and see what sort of feedback I get in the comments. I'm going to do uh, a video on that as well, but you know, I might up upload that at a later stage and, and see how things go, and we might see more of these videos going forward. Um, of course, you can see behind me, for those of you who don't know who I am and are completely new to the channel, I also host uh, Aussie RC Playground, and this is usually the background of when I do my videos. So I've been doing this for a really long time, and I don't have anywhere else to kind of do these videos, to do this content. Um, the, the house only allows for so much for me to sort of set things up. And even the tripod as it is now, I've got the lens kind of at its widest angle, and it's pushed right up against the window at the moment, like the, the back wall. There's only like two meters really uh, between myself and the camera. Um, and there's, I really can't do anything else. So unfortunately, this is gonna be the background of Aussie RC airspace as well. Uh, if you wanna check out what I do in that channel, uh, check the video description, I'll have links in there and you guys can go and check that out and to your heart's content and find out what I do there. So, getting stuck back into this. Uh, as I said, I only just got this today. I've already taken it out of the box, but I haven't assembled anything yet. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take, get rid of that box and uh, bring the plane out, lay everything out and uh, just see exactly what goes where and kind of plan, you know, get a bit of a plan of attack at how we're gonna build this thing. So once I've got everything out of the box, I lay everything out on my bench just to double check that I've got everything as I should have as it states in the manual. This is a good opportunity to double check your contents and uh, raise any warranty claims or anything like that with the hobby shop or retailer or website, wherever you got the plane from. So that's a little tip there that I like to do. Um, this also allows me to plan uh, a little bit ahead and just see exactly how I'm going to do this build. Obviously, the instructions usually have it right in the order in which you assemble everything. So, you know, put this part on here, screw this on here, and everything should flow pretty well. But uh, I do sometimes switch it up a little bit depending on what it is I'm doing. Uh, and I'll admit that not all the manuals are 100% correct. Sometimes um, you do want to do one part before the other just to make it easier to maneuver the plane or set something up a particular way or test something. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. But of course, a lot of that comes with the experience. A lot of the times I just skim over the instructions just to get a feel of what order they expect you to do certain things. And then after that, I kind of play it by year and just make sure I do it the way that it suits me. So as you can see, I've got everything laid out here. We've got our uh, main wings just here, which are just below the camera line. Uh, we've got our drop tanks just over here. We've got our horizontal stab just here. Uh, a little tiny spar, which is kind of comically small. I hope that it works okay in these wings. Um, they've given me this little bag with some, I think these are like surface hinges, you know, control hinges or whatever they are. I don't know why they've given this these because all the, all the control surfaces are already on there, but maybe they're spares. Um, we've got a little piece of foam that we need to glue onto the fuselage. We've got our prop, which comes in four blades, four independent blades, which then screw on to the base of your spinner. And then the spinner itself goes on top and clamps everything together. And that's essentially your prop. Um, we've got a little baggie here with um, a couple of plastic bits that are going to actually clamp the main wing onto the fuselage. We've got a little torpedo tube that's gonna go on that wing over there. And the little tail hook for uh, some scale detail, you know, because this is a Sea Fury, so it used to be on uh, warships. So it needed a little hook to kind of come in and land and not fly off the end of the, the, end of the, other, uh, the other end of the ship. <laughs> uh, and then this little bag here has got, I think these are like three Y leads. There's some screws in here, uh, a tube of glue and some carbon fiber little bits of tubing and an extra sort of like little clevis thing and that's it. So we'll go through all this as I you know, put this plane together. Now aside from this, one of the other things that I always like to keep handy, as you can probably see here, is uh, I get my battery and my uh, receiver and my radio. I keep all of these kind of handy and ready to go. So when I get to the point where I actually want to test control surfaces and make sure everything's connected correctly, I've got that there ready to go as well. Of course, the fuselage, which uh, you know has been standing here waiting for me to mention it, <laughs> Uh, this comes fully assembled like this as you see it, so you don't have to do anything uh, to the fuselage. Uh, it comes exactly as it is. Uh, it's got a little hatch just over here with a couple of really strong magnets, which is nice. Um, and then inside here, 
they give you this little shelf liner thing. It's like a rubbery thing to stop the battery from sliding around. I personally don't use these. Um, as you probably saw, my battery has Velcro on it. Um, and that's really something that's just happened over, over time. Like I used to have, a, or have a lot of wings and uh, some other smaller planes that don't have battery straps. So I put Velcro on all my batteries to stick them down. And uh, pretty much every battery that I have for my planes, I have some Velcro on it. So I just put a loose strip of Velcro in there, stop the battery from sliding around. This does have a Velcro strap, so it's going to hold it in place really well. The Velcro is just there to kind of like stop it from sliding around so you know, nothing bad happens to the CG as you're mid-flight. This comes with XT60 connectors, which is fine. But as you can see, these, uh, my batteries have XT150s. Now, my smaller packs, 4S packs, they're all XT60s. But this, I think, runs anything from a 3300 to a 5000 4S. Um, and that is a pretty educated guess because I've got the Flightline Spitfire that I've been flying for a while now, and that runs these exact batteries. 3300 4S all the way up to 5000 4S, and uh, that's running XT150s as well. It's just all my bigger batteries, they just run these connectors. If you want to know how to solder these on and why I use these, Check the video description, I'll have a link, in, a link in there to an old video that I did under the Aussie RC Playground um, channel. And that'll kind of take you through, you know, all the reasoning why I use these connectors, why I like them for some of the higher amp draw, higher performance uh, packs, such as the uh, 8S Euro Fighter that we've got here as well. So I'll be using XT150s in that. So kicking this off, uh, the first step is actually gluing this little piece on. So you flip your fuselage upside down and this guy just gets glued in here like so. Uh, now you want to score this a little bit with, an, with a knife, you know, just put a couple of cuts in here and a couple of cuts on the actual fuse itself. Um, and then you can use the tube of glue that they've given you. Um, I'm not going to use this one because I've got a, another one from other free wing planes that I've purchased in the past that's still got heaps of glue in it. So I'll be using that. And um, yeah, I'll be putting this on here whilst that's going on and drying. I'm going to take my battery tray out of the fuse uh, to be able to remove the ESC out of here. And then I'm going to be swapping out my connectors so I don't do my swap over with the ESC in here. Uh, it can be done, but it's really tricky and it's kind of awkward to do. So I'll take this out and make life easy for me. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I'm back and I've got my ESC with my XT150 connectors. You'll notice that I've got the bullets of the motor sticking out of the front cowling, and there's a good reason for that, and I'll swap, um, flip this over and just kind of show you. I need to be a little bit careful with this. I know this is probably pretty well glued. It's been about 20 minutes or so, uh, but I just need to be a little bit careful with it. So when I took the battery tray out, um, I had full access to the ESC, and I could just pull it out from the hatch here and it would have been fine to just take it and do what I needed to do with it. The problem is, when you go to put it back, because these cables and the bullets are kind of buried right in there, unless you've got some specialty really long needle nose pliers, and you might need an extra set of hands as well, because you can hold the bullets with the needle nose, but then to get these in there, your hands might not be big enough, and you won't be able to see too much either. So it's really awkward, and what I found it was probably easier to just slide the ESC straight out of the front. Now you still need to remove the tray to do this because you kind of need to guide it through the little gap underneath the motor, which is there for airflow. Um, and it fits perfectly through there. It wasn't a challenge at all, but you just need to sort of like, you know, get it to feed through. Um, and then I could yank it out from the front. Now there is a, another flip side to this, which is a positive, And that is that when you do anything like this, like if you take the ESC out and swap it out to, I don't know, EC5s or XT90 connectors, and you go to put it back, you need to check the rotation of the motor before you put everything back together, because then you're gonna be stuck, right? There's a 50% chance you're gonna get that wrong, uh, which is another reason why I like to keep my batteries, receivers, and radios handy in case I do need to do any testing like this. So I'm gonna plug the ESC in, plug it into the motor, um, and just bind up that receiver and just test the rotation of the motor, see which way it's going. If it's the wrong way around, I just swap any two of these and uh, we'll be uh, good to go and yeah, I can put everything back together. Right, so I've got my motor going the right way and believe it or not, as luck would have it, when I first plugged it in, I actually had it going the wrong way. And I, I did take out my spinner and one of the props just to kind of double check to make sure I actually had it going the right way. This was. Uh, uh, spins anti-clockwise and the motor was spinning clockwise so I swapped over two wires problem solved but I wanted to um, whilst I've got this all set up and ready to go 
I wanted to take you through a very crucial step that I think a lot of people don't do, especially if you're fairly new to the hobby, and that is to calibrate the ESC. So I haven't done it yet. I just plugged it in and I know it's working, but I can tell that there's a bit of a dead band on my throttle when I apply power. And uh, what you need to do uh, is actually just calibrate it to make sure that it's all working right now. Some of the more modern ESCs, I think even some of the Spectrum ESCs, I think actually some of the Freewing ESCs won't arm the motors until you've actually done a calibration. So you can plug it in and bind your receiver as you normally do, but you go to apply power and there's nothing going on. You maybe get it like a, a weird beep out of the motor or something like that. Uh, and that means that you just need to calibrate in order for the thing to actually work properly. So for those of you who don't know, if you've been in the hobby long enough, you probably know how to do this with your eyes closed. But for those of you that don't know, are fairly new to this, I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick. So um, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that if you've got any throttle cuts or anything activated on your radio, turn them off so your throttle is active, right? Um, you're going to basically give full throttle on the radio with nothing plugged in. Okay, so you're gonna get full throttle and then you're gonna plug your battery in. Now, you always wanna do this with the prop off, okay? And I like to do it when I'm setting up a new plane, I like to do it before I even have any other control surfaces connected. So I've only got the ESC um, and this is just for the motor, just to calibrate, that's all we're doing. So full throttle on the radio, plug your battery in and you're gonna hear a beep, that double beep there. Once you hear that double beep, you throttle down and you're calibrated. That's it, it's as simple as that, right? So now, I can feel that the very tiniest little bit of dead band right at the base of my throttle stick as compared to before. And it feels a lot smoother as well and a lot more responsive. So you'll notice it straight away. When you put a new ESC in or when you swap out the receiver, always do a recalibration to make sure everything's working correctly. Recalibration or calibration doesn't, um, set the motor direction or have anything to do with that. It's just to basically calibrate the speed controller to the throttle range on your radio. That's really all we're doing. Once it's done, you can unplug and you sit, you can go on about your day setting up the rest of the plane and whatever it is you, you know, you're gonna do next. Okay, so the next stage is to put the wing together and mount it to the fuselage. Now, the manual does say to glue the wing, um, which I'm going to do. You can probably get away with not gluing it, but do that at your own risk. Um, I'm gonna follow the instructions here. I have no plans to disassemble this plane afterwards, unless it has an unexpected disassembly uh, during flight. Uh, so I'm going to glue the wings together. So I've already uh, scored my surfaces and it's all ready to go. Now, you can sand these down a little bit. I usually just use an X-Acto knife and just do like little crisscrosses on them. Um, and poke them a little bit just so that the glue actually goes in there and really seeps into the foam. And of course it bypasses any paint or overspray that you may have on these surfaces. So uh, just make sure you clean that up a little bit to make sure you get good adhesion with the glue. Don't forget to put your spar in. Uh, that, this is very important. I once saw a guy assembling his plane um, at the flight line, getting ready to fly for the day and he forgot to put the spar. So um, I'm pretty sure you can all guess what happened. Uh, it was quite entertaining. Anyway, uh, the screws that they uh, ask you to use are the biggest ones that come in the little screw packet, so you can't really mess that up. Uh, just pick out the biggest ones. I've got my little plastic pieces that are gonna clamp onto the wing and ho hold everything in place. They're ready to go. I've got my screwdriver over there somewhere. And yeah, I'm just gonna put the glue in, put the spar, get this ready, and then we're done. So I've got my wing assembled, as you can see here, and I've just literally just put it together so the glue's not totally dry yet. But as I was about to put the wing on the fuselage, I realized these cables are really short. So once the cables kind of poke through there, it's gonna be really hard to sort of clip in your wire leads. So before you put the wing on, make sure you actually clip your wire leads in there. Uh, also make sure that you're connecting the two cables that are supposed to be connected together. Um, and if you have to, uh, connect up your receiver and, uh, and just double check everything to make sure landing gear flaps, ailerons, everything works before you actually clamp everything down. Uh, but I think they're all labeled, so just use your wire leads now, plug them in, and then feed it through the fuse before you actually put the wing on there to save you some trouble. So as I'm putting the wing on, I've realized that even though you may glue the two halves of the wing together, you can still remove the wing from the plane for transportation. It'll just be one big wing. Um, so yeah, you can probably still glue it together, 
um, as long as you're okay with just having this as one big piece, I guess. Um, yeah, just wanted to sort of chip in here and say that as I'm putting this together because we're not actually gluing the wing to the fuse. We're just gluing the two halves of the main wing together. All right, so our Sea Fury is starting to take uh, some shape now. It's starting to look a little bit better than it was before. Um, our horizontal stab comes stuck together and you need to pull it apart gently without breaking it. There we go. Now this, these bits are always fun. Move your control surfaces a little bit, make sure they get loosened up. You know, make sure they're nice and loosey-goosey so we don't uh, strain our uh, servos. Uh, got the little spar here that goes in, in the hole just like so and feed that through just like that. Now this one you don't need to glue anything in, although you can, you can probably put a dab of glue in there, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it out, I'm not gonna glue it, because um, it's, it's pretty well locked in, and it's gonna have two screws on either side to kind of hold it in place, so um, I think we don't really need to glue anything here. Plus if it gets damaged and stuff like that, I can always replace it a little bit easier, um, as opposed to having to pull it apart with glue everywhere. Okay, gently push that in. Is that in position? It looks like it's in position. All right, yep, that looks about right. Okay, now we can uh, hook on our little clevis here to the control horn, and um, we can start plugging our receiver in to start testing control surfaces and directions and all that sort of thing. Now you might be wondering, Vass, how come you got the wing off? Well, when I connected my receiver to check all my control surfaces, which by the way are all reversed, I need to change them all, we'll go through that later. I realized that the control rod to the elevator was about an inch and a half away from the control horn on the, on the surface. So I'm like, okay, well, trim, sub-trim, and adjusting the thread on the clever sink and I fixed that. I had to actually get onto the servo itself and adjust the little clamp that holds the, the entire control rod. I've taken the screw out because it is the elevator and uh, these are threaded on. Um, I've taken the screw off because I wanna put some Loctite on there to make sure that this guy doesn't back out. You know, I can live with a rudder screw coming loose or something like that. You know, you can compensate, but if you lose elevator, that's usually game over for that model. So I'm putting a little bit of Loctite. I'm screwing it back into place and I'm making sure that my surface is pretty much, you know, level. Uh, yep, there. Yeah. Actually, it looks like it's a little bit down, so. Give it a, a smidge of up. Yep, that looks about right. And now I can tighten it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my rudder. Um, I'll actually take a picture of this and actually show you and put it up on screen. So you can actually see exactly what I'm talking about because I know this is in the way and I don't wanna move the camera because it won't go back in the same spot. So I'll take a snapshot, I'll put it up for you and you'll know exactly what I mean. So this is normally where I tend to lose a little bit of time uh, and that is the initial setup of everything. So I can already tell that my ailerons need to be adjusted. This one here is sticking up quite a bit. Uh, my rudder seems to be okay, I've got that pretty straight. The elevator seems to be pretty straight. But my flaps for some reason, uh, even adjusted all the way to max, they don't close 100% on both sides. So the way to fix that is to obviously take these control rods uh, these, these clevises off the control rod, uh, horn and undo them or do them up depending on what movement you need. Um, and then that should hopefully fix all that up. Same thing goes for my aileron over there. But first and foremost, if I go right, sorry, if I go left, the right one comes up, which is incorrect. So before I start adjusting anything, I make sure that my channels are all going the right way. Um, so if I go to servo setup here, reverse, aileron, left, right. Okay, 
up, up is up, so elevator is the only one that seems to be correct. Rudder is wrong, so going to the right is actually going to the left. So flick that, now that's correct. Uh, my flaps, I've kind of played with them a little bit already, I just need to adjust them. And my landing gear is also in need of being reversed because if I flip it upside down, uh, my switch, yeah, my switch needs to be the other way. So I'll go and reverse my gear. So that's now correct. So everything's working. It's just a matter of adjusting the length of the rods now. And that's pretty much done. Like, um, I just need to put the little torpedo thing. I've got the little hook that goes back here somewhere and there's a screw to lock that into place. So I'll put that in. And uh, once it's all sort of done and finished, um, I'll put the prop on and uh, I'll run you through that maybe a little bit and just see how that goes. And we should be pretty much ready to go. I'll set up some dual rates um, and I need to put the battery tray back in. The reason why I haven't put it back in as of yet is because um, I need to sort of organize all my wire management and some of it may end up underneath the battery tray to clean up. So that's why I haven't put it back on. Um, but we'll get to that, you know, that's like the finishing touches. But uh, for now, we'll take a break. It's late in the night um, and I need to go and get some rest. So we'll come back tomorrow and finish this one off. All right, so here we are, new day and the final chapter for this build. This is gonna be a long one because there's quite a lot to get through. But as you can see, the plane is ready and it's ready for Maiden. So hopefully this weekend, the weather can hold out and I can actually get that out, out, out there and put this guy in the air. So who knows, we might actually see some flight footage of this bird in the not too distant future. So uh, let's get into it. As you can see, everything's ready to go. Uh, last night before I kind of knocked off for the day, I put my little tail hook on. I uh, put my little uh, torpedo tube over here, which I scored the plastic with, the, uh, with a knife and did the same thing on the phone to make sure that they actually glue together really well. Uh, those little carbon fiber little tubes that I had in the plastic bag, they're actually the guns and they go on the wing. So you just need to add a little bit of glue on the end of those, push them into place. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. You just push them all the way to the back. The holes are at different heights or dip depths. So you'll get a couple of them that'll stick out a little bit and that's just how they are. So just so that you're aware. Um, I adjusted my control surfaces. So my uh, ailerons are nice and flush. I also had to adjust the flaps because even with um, my throws all the way, um, the flaps just stayed open a little bit So because they're split flap. So they even when you push them up all the way, they stayed open. So I just adjusted them mechanically. And that just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of time. Um, you just undo the little clevises on the control rods and uh, you know, you'll eventually get them to close properly. Uh, so that's all set. I've set my jewel rates, I've got my timers, I've got all my switches sorted out. So it's pretty much ready to go. This thing is dead set, just ready for a nice day and it's in the air. Um, now, a couple of things to keep in mind here, a couple of issues that I came across, across during this build. Um, first and foremost, putting the prop on, uh, that went together real easy, that's not the issue. The issue was when I actually powered up the plane, I had huge vibrations coming from that prop. And uh, I wasn't sure if it was the prop or the spinner. So I took the spinner off and just powered it on with the prop. Um, the, there's a bolt that obviously holds everything in place. So you can fly this and power it on without the spinner. And sure enough, as soon as I took the spinner off, um, the prop uh, was super smooth. Like th this actually comes out of the factory really well balanced. I didn't have to touch it. So when I put the spinner on, the vibrations came back and I had to adjust it. So how do you balance the spinner? There's probably some official way that you're supposed to do it, but I did it kind of a backyardy, kind of homemade way uh, because I don't have any equipment to really do it. I do have a, um, I'm looking over there because I can see it. I do have a prop balancer, which I've used many times in the past, and that works really well. Although if I had to balance this prop, it would be kind of difficult because the prop balancer I have is one of those that goes through the prop and it's really designed for two bladed props. Um, and they can't really be too big either. So that's one issue. Uh, but to do the spinner, I thought I could do the same and just put it through the spinner, but it doesn't work because the hole for the spinner for the screw uh, was too small. And I didn't want to bore it out because then I could drill it off center and that could make matters worse. And also uh, I could have made it too big where the screw would just go straight through and then the spinner won't even hold on there unless I start putting washers and modifying, whatever. Anyways, I didn't want to do that. 
So what I did, uh, I just got a carbon fiber leftover tube uh, rod rather that that's, uh, I mean, you can use metal, you can use anything really as long as it's straight. And I put my spinner on here and as soon as I put it on, it just dropped to the heavy side. It just went straight down the bottom. I'm like, okay, well this might actually work. So I started putting some um, uh, fiber tape that I have that I've been using for many years to like patch up planes and things like that. Uh, and that's a fairly sort of chunky tape. And I put about four or five layers, maybe about one inch thick, uh, one inch long rather. Um, and it just wasn't having any sort of major effect on it. it. The thing would just keep dropping to one side. And I thought, okay, I need something heavier. But, you know, I didn't want to put like 20 layers of tape on there because then, you know, tape, it's sticky tape in the heat. It might start shifting. It might come undone. I didn't want to take that risk. So... Uh, I remembered I had some epoxy putty and it got me out of trouble before to balance some high speed wheels that I've got for some of my fast cars and um, it, worked we it worked well with the wheels. So I thought, well, maybe this will work with the spinner as well. Now, for those of you who've never used epoxy putty, um, it's actually a really cool thing. It's like Play-Doh, but it's, it's got an outer layer and then it's got an inner core and they're two different colors. And essentially it's like a tube. So you just slice it off like a salami. Um, slice off a little slice and you peel a bit of plastic that's on the outside, take that off and you just mash it together until it goes all one solid color. And once it gets down to one color, in my case, it's just gray, um, you've got about five minutes or so to apply it and do whatever it is you wanna do it before it goes rock hard. And I mean, this stuff goes rock hard. It's incredible how hard this thing actually gets. Uh, but it does have, when you're when it's soft, it does have a bit of stickiness to it. You can stick it to stuff. And I thought, well, I'll put it on the inside of the spinner and I'll put a little bit in there. And um, sure enough, I had the spinner on the, you know, on the rod and I could put it pretty much at any position without it dropping or even rotating a little bit. So it worked well. It sounds very crude. I know that there's probably a better way to do it, but it worked because now I can actually spool this up and it's super smooth. And even if you don't see or hear a vibration, you can feel it if you hold the plane. And I can tell you there's no vibrations going through this as, uh, at all at the moment. So I'm really happy that it actually worked out. Maybe I'm lucky, but this is something that worked for me. Maybe if you're in a bit of a jam, it might work for you. Um, now, the next thing, of course, was CG. And CG is a bit of an issue with this plane. And I've actually been asking on the Motion RC Facebook page to see if anyone could tell me where they've got their CG at and how they sort of fix this. Everyone just keeps telling me that I need to add nose weight. I know this, but where is your CG at? That's, that's the question that I asked. No one seems to be giving me a straight answer, which is really disappointing. Um, but factory CG is about five or four or five millimeters ahead of this little, um, where the black stripe finishes. So you're just ahead of the black stripe. Um, and if I was to use the 3300 milliamp battery with no added weight or anything like that, I'm almost about 20 mil back from where CG sh should be. And that's bad, right? Especially on a war warbird, you're gonna have a bad day. So I thought, okay, I'll use a 5000 milliamp, which is what I've got in here now. I've actually got a 5000 uh, Gen Zeiss uh, bashing battery. That's the one that's in there. And um, it got a little bit better but it still wasn't enough. I'm still very tail heavy. So I thought, okay, I need to add lead weight. So I took the battery tray out and underneath the battery tray, there's like a void and you can put some weights under there uh, attached to the bottom of the battery tray. So I actually stuck them on there. I put some CA to make sure they don't fall out. And I even put a bit of tape over the top um, just to make sure that again, they don't fall out of there because I don't want that weight to fall and roll down you know, the, the fuselage and then the, the whole thing is just, it's gonna be game over for this plane, right? Um, so I've made sure that they're nice in there and secure. And now I am just ahead. I'm not exactly where the CG should be. I'm pretty much on that line where the, where the black stripe finishes or, uh, or just slightly ahead. So it's not the worst. I'm willing to take that gamble. Um, I've just ran out of lead weights. I don't have any more. And uh, I'm gonna fly it as is if the weather permits this weekend. And uh, we'll see how we go. If I need to add more lead weight, well, so be it. I'll add more lead weight later on. But for the moment, 
I'm only flying this on 5000s uh, purely just to try and get CG with this. And that's of course with a little bit of extra <laughs> putty in the um, spinner as well. Now the drop tanks is another thing that I did as well as I was saying I was going to put magnets in these and um, it looks as though this may actually work. Now I did two different methods and we'll see which one works. There's also a third method. I've got some slightly bigger magnets if these need to be any stronger but these are a 10 by 5 by 2 millimeter thick magnets. This one I've actually got them inside the foam so they're actually going long ways and on this one I've got the same magnets, but I've actually gone across, all right? Um, I don't know, I'm just trying different things, right, to see what works best, but they've both got a bit of tape over the top. They've all been glued into place, and uh, of course, I've had to sort of carve out the foam and um, put the magnets on, on the wing as well. So I'm hoping that these work okay. They, they seem to be pretty secure. The plane's not gonna be super quick. If it's anything like the Spitfire that I own, the Flightline Spit, Spitfire, it's probably just going to have enough power to get around. It's going to fly pretty scale. It's not going to be any rocket ship. Um, I've upgraded the power system on my Spitfire because I felt that it really didn't have anything in reserve to have a bit of fun with the plane. Uh, and it didn't have a very good climb either. So I put an FMS motor in it. I upgraded the ESC. I think I've put a 70 or 80 amp in there and I kept the same prop. Because I know Motion RC have a power upgrade kit but you need to swap out the prop to a two bladed prop and it just doesn't look right to me these planes deserve to have either a three or four bladed prop depending on the airplane uh, to put a two bladed prop eh, didn't i didn't like it. i didn't want to do it so i searched around i found an fms motor and um, it actually works perfect i'm really really happy with how the spitfire turned out and i'm hoping that if this has the same issue, I can upgrade this one in the same fashion and they'll both have the same power system. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but I do want to fly it stock just to see how it is. Um, I'm really keen to fly this plane because I used to have the um, Hobby King Avios um, Sea Fury many years ago, and that plane flew horribly. Um, at the same time, I also, I'm very much aware that I probably wasn't at the skill level that I should have had to be able to fly it properly. So it was a bit of column A, a bit of column B, but I do admit the plane flew very bad. It was very heavy, it feels like it felt a lot heavier than this, and it felt quite underpowered as well. So hopefully this isn't the case. It does feel a lot lighter. The plane feels really, really good. Uh, it looks fantastic. I've got a soft spot for the Sea Fury because of the Avios Sea Fury that I used to have, and uh, that's why I gravitated towards this one. But I'm gonna get more of these flight line planes in the 1200 mil. Um, and uh, I know there's a bear cat, a blue one or something that, I, that I'm probably gonna get next. And there's a couple others that I've got in my eye on as well. So I'll have the full collection eventually. But this one, um, I just had to get it now while I could and I can't wait to fly it. All right, well, that's pretty much it for me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're here <laughs> up until this point, be sure to hit that like button before you go. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and uh, go out there, enjoy the hobby and happy flying. And I'll see you next time.